This question comes from Quinn, who asks, how long could the human race survive on only cannibalism? This is a bad idea. Do you need me to clarify that? I hope not. It's a horrible idea. There are about 500 trillion calories of human in the world. If frozen or otherwise preserved, that would be enough, at least in terms of raw calories, to keep a tiny viable population of around 100 people alive for millions of years. It should be noted that scientists calculated the minimum viable population size out of interest in interplanetary travel, not cannibalism, but either way, the number's the same. Eating nothing but meat sounds bad, nutritionally, but the lack of vegetables wouldn't necessarily kill you. Under some circumstances, people can survive on high meat or all meat diets, especially if they eat things like organ meat and bone marrow. There are some vitamins and nutrients found in those which are missing from the narrower range of mammal skeletal muscle and fat in the typical Western diet. The US experienced meat shortages during World War II because so much food was being diverted to soldiers and allies overseas. In response, the US government employed some of the world's best anthropologists, psychologists, social scientists, and food scientists to figure out how to encourage its citizens to eat more organs and other animal body parts. One of the ideas this project had was that these foods should be rebranded as variety meats, and a Google book search shows the phrase appearing suddenly in US books around that time. There are a lot of things we don't understand about nutritional deficiencies, and a lot of dispute, to put it mildly, over what kind of diets are or aren't healthy. But no matter what nutrients we would or wouldn't get in Quinn's scenario, we would face a bigger problem. Contaminated food. Even if you cooked your meat, it would be hard to avoid all kinds of disease exposure as you worked your way through the remains of the human population. In a small enough population, every outbreak is a pandemic. It wouldn't take long for something to wipe you out. Let's consider a different scenario, one perhaps more in line with what Quinn was imagining. What if half the population ate the other half? If the average human weighs 50 kilograms and eats a couple thousand calories per day, then one person contains enough meat to feed another person for about a month. If every month, half the population eats the other half, and in between everyone pretends nothing horrific is happening, we could go for 33 months of cannibalism before the second to last person was eaten by the last. But eating people who have eaten other people is a bad idea. For starters, it's a bad idea because you're eating people. Why are you eating people? But it's also bad because it's an effective way to transmit deadly prion diseases. On the other hand, most prion diseases have lengthy incubation periods, so they might be a lesser concern in a world where you have a 50% chance of getting eaten every month. Lastly, we'd have to decide who got eaten in which round. To try to make things fair, we could pair off and flip coins. And if we did, the result would be, literally, the tournament bracket to end all tournament brackets.